many thanks for choosing us. We begin with Minority Leader in Parliament, Haruna Idriso, who has hinted until Techiman South parliamentary results are recollated, his side of the House will not participate in the inauguration of President Ekofuado for a second term. The President is due to be sworn in on 7th January 2021 before parliamentarians in Parliament House. The NDC insists it won the seat. Mr. Idriso tells Joy News the declaration of the seat in favor of the NPP's Martin J. Mensakosa is fraudulent and they will not allow it to stand. Christopher of the NDC won. He's been robbed of that mandate and would make it conditional even to the swearing in which would take place on the 7th because that one gives us that parliamentary majority that we need. It is not acceptable. You know, they're just joking with Tachima Saf, added to their number, claim a false 137 that they don't deserve. They are 136. And we are saying that openly, do it openly, transparently. And in any case, why is the media not challenging the EC? to do what is legally appropriate. Yeah, so where is your resource? So you think that you want a Ghana tomorrow where resources are declared for a parliamentary constituency, candidates that not have access to the resource, political parties don't have access to the resource, and you people is, think it's right? It will be right tomorrow. It will be right tomorrow. Prepare for a Ghana tomorrow where anybody can sit in his house and say that I've declared as us, I've won. So, just to be clear, you wouldn't be part of the inauguration of Nanado Danka Kufadu if they go ahead with it once the issue of Techiman South yes, is not Yes, yes, yes. If Techiman South is not resolved amicably and satisfactorily, in accordance with the laws of Ghana, and in particular with Regulation 43 of CI 127, and, declared and for the more NDC. emphatically, more emphatically, coalition done openly and transparently by EC, and we been and we remain in denial that we don't have the results for Techima South, we would be thinking through what to do on the South. Meanwhile, the NDC parliamentary candidate for Techiman South, Christopher Bayere, says the NDC won the seat by more than 700 votes. He says a simple recollation will reveal the NDC won. He says notice there will be more protests in the area unless that recollation happens. We want all the media houses to be there for us to do the coalition. The minimum per hour results is about 700 vote difference for the parliamentary which we have the pin sheets available. I can't, we can't even let the media houses go through one by one, just to be sure. Why is it that they are insisting they will not do coalition or recoalition? Like the leader of the house said, initially they did for Banda more than two, three times. Techime alone is insisting no. What is the secret? And in any case, we are entitled to recoalition. If they've done coalition, it is just a matter of simple distance, which we expect the whole world stakeholders Peace Council, Christian Council, to note that this is something that has just started small. And we expect that if they don't come in, something bad could happen in Tichima. It's not a threat, but that's the reality. I'm interested in that. So then, um, what could happen if these as demands speak, are as, as we speak now, there's a demonstration in Tichima, isn't it? Yes, and that will not end. I mean, um, we're not going to allow the fact that you don't do coalition and then you bring in military to kill our people after burying the death. You still insist that you are going to take power by force. This is not a military regime. How many MPP people died of that? So we insist that the right thing be done and we'll fight it till the latter end. Will the lives or for that matter, the tension in the area and the protest and the chaos that may result from it because we've seen burning of ties and all in the course of some of these um, demonstrations, would it be worth you coming in as member of parliament over someone else? Going, you know, going forward, will it, will it be at peace if there is a situation where all this destruction happens just to lead to you taking over as member of parliament? Elect? What is the essence of democracy? Is the people's choice, isn't it? Now, you forcefully disagree with the, mili uh, the democracy, and then you decide to bring a military system. You kill two people, third person dead the next day, just because you want power forcefully. I haven't pulled guns. The NDC hasn't pulled guns. We are insisting on the democracy and the right of the people. Why I'm fighting this is for two reasons. Now, the first one is that if we do not fight this this time, next time somebody will get up 
and then use the same military system to take power. That is the first one. The second one is the fact that people came around to witness transparent, free and fair election only for them to lose their life. The only way we can honor them is to fight and ensure that there's a transparent, free and fair election, which they wish. And that is the reason why they came there. And that is why we will still fight. These are the two key reasons. It is not because of the position. Well, imagine eyewitness accounts and video records reveal live ammunition were fired into the crowd in the Tichiman South shooting, which killed two people. Videos available to join you show some military and police personnel firing directly into the crowd in the December 8th incident. Some eyewitnesses give horrifying accounts of how the joy of observing the collation of electoral results turned into a mass shooting. Most parts of the Techiman South constituency were calm and peaceful on voting day. After polling station results had been declared, all roads led to this place where the collation of results took place under the strict eye of the public. This is the Bono Champion Hall in the Techiman South constituency. This is where collation of electoral results happened. Throughout the night, supporters of both NDC and NPP kept vigil, observing collation of results. But the collation night will soon turn chaotic. Security agents fired warning shots to maintain calm as supporters of both parties fought and destroyed ballot boxes containing results from some polling stations. Alaji is an election observer. A late hour, somewhere around 11.30 to 12, there was an allegation that some boxes were coming. And some, some team youth were here protesting that those boxes shouldn't go into the coalition centre. So all of a sudden, there was a struggle. Others were like the boxes would come in. Others were like the boxes would not come and between in. The MPP and between NDC. the MPP and the supporters NDC. Who are supporters who were outside. Supporters who were outside. So there was a struggle. There was a fight and there was even a gunshot that night. Fired so, by who? By the police, just to scare the supporters. So at the end, they fought and broke those boxes. The ballot boxes? Those ballot boxes. The papers were flying away everywhere. December 8, 2020, a day after voting, was pregnant with expectations. Supporters of the NDC and NPP gathered outside the collation center in anticipation of who won. The NDC supporters, their team inside the collation center was saying that they were not satisfied with those boxes or the results in those boxes. So it was like an argument back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until later in the evening when those results were added. MPP had 49,682, the parliamentary candidate, and the NDC parliamentary candidate had 49,205. And so immediately they shoot it out, the jubilation started. So the team youth of the NDC who were also standing here were angry. Uh, how comes? Because they know that they, so they were trying to force in to the hall. So they were here? They were on the left here. They, they were standing the left, here? Yes. In their numbers? In their numbers. And they wanted to force their way into this hall? Into the hall. And the MPP supporters too were also on the right. But the military and the police, they were in the middle, trying to protect the crowd not to move in. Some accounts say party supporters started pelting stones at the security personnel. Others also say the supporters were forcing their way into the collation hall. But what happened next will remain a black day in the political history of Techiman South. This video shows protest from the crowd. Then the shooting starts. A journalist who witnessed the shooting from the front of the collation center gave this narration. The police started the warning shots, then the military also complied. 
So some of the guns were pointed at us and some too were, you know, through the, the crowd. I saw one guy lying down here. Blood was oozing from the nose and the eyes. At that time he was breathing very slowly. So in about, in about our time that we, we, we understood there were many, um, you know, supporters being victimized uh, through gunshot. A closer and critical look at this video, which marked the beginning of the firing of warning shots, showed the crowd retreating. Whilst many of the personnel are seen firing into the air, this officer in seeming police colored uniform is seen aiming at the crowd. Another amateur video captures the fleeting moment when shots were fired into the crowd and the moment when some supporters were seen lying motionless on the ground. We tried to slow the video to pay attention to detail. Here, it reveals many of the security personnel firing their guns into the air. But this military officer fires directly into the crowd. The originator of the video is heard saying some are dead and then laughs as the video ends. At this point, the crowd is stunned. Some are seen carrying the injured to safety. This woman seen here in the video helping lift a fallen supporter describes that moment. <laughs> Ye kasi ya bwone patu, minti minji na minaso. Minti minya mihushi. Minti tama mikuwa pajaa na wadituo no, miye sana misao kwa tuwe mpajaa na mrente mbebe sonu. Mwase ya mami, maenjo, mayon sonu mo, elu mwa pajaa. Na wawu. 18-year-old Abdullah Ayarek, an apprentice in the street lighting business, and Muhammad Tajuddin, 41, a father of four, were killed. Nine others sustained various degrees of injuries. Reporting for Joy News, Erastus Asaridonko, Kumasi.